Daily Telegraph has today revealed its Sydney Power 100, a guide to the ambitious and influential people who really run Sydney. It includes many of the nation's media and marketing industry power brokers. Joining me now live is Louise Roberts, the executive editor of the Daily Telegraph. Louise, good morning. Thanks for your time. Firstly, take us through some of this year's inclusions in the top 100. Okay, so this, as you said, this is our guide to who really runs the city. Number one is Scott Morrison, and number two is the Premier Gladys Berejiklian, and number three is Peter Volandis, who of course is running racing and rugby in the state. Um, we've had some surprise entries. In the top ten, we've got Shane Fitzsimons, who of course showed tremendous leadership in the bushfire season as the RFS boss, and Celeste Barber, who of course raised 52 million for victims of bushfire as well. So there's been some interesting candidates there. Uh, also, we've got the CBD um, milk crate heroes. You remember the stabbing situation we had last year? And these were the men who used a chair and a milk crate to pin down the offender in question. So it's good to actually uh, recognise people who maybe aren't big names or the, what we call the top end of town names, but ordinary people who step up when there is a crisis. Absolutely. Uh, Louise, take us through how the top 100 are chosen. Right, so we have an editorial panel which is led by the editor Ben English and what we did is we looked at our list from last year, this is the second year we've done it, and worked out what the moves were. Um, it was pretty easy to keep ScoMo and Gladys at number one and number two respectively given the years that they've both had. They've, well, they've had some upsets during that time but they've held on to their power base most certainly on that. So we looked at who was moving around, who maybe should be included given news events and certainly Celeste and Shane Fitzsimons were two candidates to definitely put into the top ten given their coverage and given their influence on Sydney during that period. Uh, one of the interesting inclusions was uh, Dave and Candace Warner. They, they made the list for the very first yes. time. Um, Louise, you know, That's right. a couple of years ago he was a disgrace really to the nation. I mean, how far has he come since Sandpaper Gate? Well, he has, you know, from our readers' perspective, he's reinvented himself. He, as you say, he's come a long way from Sandpaper Gate. And they really are a Sydney power couple. I mean, Candace is a successful former iron woman and mother of three and businesswoman in her own right. So together, they really personify what it means to be a power couple in Sydney and deserve their place in our list. There's also a number of, of media bosses included. Take us through it. Mm-hmm. So we've got James Warburton, who's the CEO of Channel 7. We have our own Michael Miller who's in the top ten as well. Uh, we have uh, Sky News boss Paul Whitaker. We have Patrick Delaney from Foxtel. So really all the movers and shakers in the media world are included in our top 100. Also Shane Fitzsimmons, as you mentioned, the uh, New South Wales RFS mm. Commissioner, he's on the list. Now he's had a massive year already. He was the, the, you know, the face of the bushfire crisis for many months. How important was it to recognise mm. his efforts? Oh, incredibly important. I mean, our readers you know, are huge fans of Shane's and he's um, going to be a pivotal part of our podcast, which is Mates Under Fire at the moment. Uh, it, he just showed tremendous leadership. He, he's you know, a man who really at, worked tremendous hours and did what he could to support his servicemen out in the field, the firefighters, the ordinary people, but also we remember the footage of him at the funeral of two firefighters and when he pinned the medal on the toddler son of one of the deceased firemen was incredibly moving and that was an image that made headlines around the world. So from that point of view, as you say, he was the face of the bushfires. Very a worthy uh, induction into the top 100, that's for sure. Absolutely. Now, Louise, Louise, was there anybody that uh, was actually taken out of this year's top 100 list that didn't make it this year? Yes, there were a couple. Yes, I guess the most notable ones would be Malcolm Turnbull and Tony Abbott, who, of course, had uh, significant political upheaval during that period. Um, but we, I guess we tend to focus on the new inclusions in our list. So some people sort of moved up a spot or moved down a spot in a way, but which we all illustrate in the magazine out today. So it's good to actually embrace and celebrate the people who've been successful in Sydney, I think, particularly people like the um, CBD milk crate heroes. Well, if people would like to read more, they can pick up that magazine of the top 100 Absolutely. today in today's Daily Telegraph. Louise Roberts, the executive editor of the Daily Telegraph. Appreciate Thank your you. time. Thank you.